This video is brought to you by Upstart. Hey brother! Guys, let's face it, Patronuses are awesome. And one of the things I love to do in Harry Potter is try and guess what different characters Patronuses might be. I don't wanna brag or anything, but my Patronus is the Scottish Terrier, mightiest Patronus of them all. Cower in fear all ye who face the wrath of- Oh my God, what kind of miss so good. I love my wife, take him home, cuddle with him. Anyway, speaking of ferocious, one character's Patronus we never get to see in action is Voldemort. <laughs> and yes, I know what you're thinking. Uh, isn't Voldemort too evil to make a Patronus? To which I would say uh, Umbridge made a Patronus, so I'm not sure there is such a thing as too evil to make a Patronus. But yeah, no, good point. I also don't think he can make one. His soul has just been ripped into too many pieces, and a Patronus is such a powerful force of positivity that it just doesn't seem like the kind of thing he would still be able to do. And JK Rowling has even said in an interview before, because a Patronus is used against things that Death Eaters generally generate or fight alongside, they would not need Patronuses. But hey, just because he can't do it doesn't mean I'm not curious as to what it might be if he could do it. Like, what would Tom Riddle's Patronus have been, you know, before he started making all the Horcruxes? And great news, guys. I think we have come to a very satisfying answer as to what Voldemort's Patronus would have been. And no, it's not a snake. Guys, before we dive on into today's theory, we need to give a huge thank to today's sponsor, Upstart. I have been practicing my Reducio charm day in and day out, and I don't want to pat myself on the back too much, but I am getting pretty good at it. Unfortunately though, I have to say, it doesn't seem to be working on debt. Something about GAMP's five laws of transfiguration or whatever. Isn't it always something like that? But the good news is you don't need magic. Upstart is here to help. They can help you consolidate your debt into a reasonable rate that goes beyond the traditional credit score. They take things like your education and your job history into account while considering your rate. It's simple, fast, and easy to check your rate, and it's only a soft pull, so it won't affect your credit score. And once approved, most people see funds in their account in just one day. If you wanna see how low you your rate could be, all you have to do is go to upstart.com slash SCB. Again, that is upstart.com slash SCB. Link is in the description down below. Yes, Voldemort is the descendant of Salazar Slytherin. And, and yes, he can talk to snakes and has a pet snake and looks like a snake. But no, I do not think Voldemort Patronus would be a snake or even serpentine or even reptilian. As it turns out, unbelievably, there is a different animal that somehow suits him even more. An animal whose polar opposite is the stag, an animal whose reign as king of the animals was replaced by the lion, and whose very name was taboo. I speak, of course, are you ready for it? Are you? I don't think you are. Are you ready? Butterflies. No, it's not butterflies. It is the bear. And I know, right? Like, what? Uh, the bear? I know what you're thinking. I totally agree with you. You had me at butterflies. No, bears. But before we begin, I want to give credit to the person who submitted this excellent theory to us and totally sold us on it, Ola Gall. She did a lot of research and we really loved it. So, bears, beats, Battlestar Galactica, or actually just bears. Although high five to everyone who got that joke. But let's talk about bears as they relate to Slavic mythology, because the more you dig into this, the crazier it gets and the more perfect it fits. Bears in Slavic culture were associated with unlimited power and aggression, which is very fitting for Voldemort. But the thing that immediately stands out when you start to look into this is the crazy superstition and taboo people had around the true name of the bear. In fact, the word bear itself is kind of like calling Voldemort you know who or he who must not be named. It is a substitute word for the actual name which people were too afraid to speak aloud for fear of summoning the creature to wherever they were. Which lines up perfectly with how Voldemort's name is treated throughout the entire series but especially in Deathly Hallows. After the ministry has fallen, the Death Eaters make Voldemort 
Voldemort's name a taboo, so that if you speak it aloud, it will signal Snatchers to your exact location so they can come assault you. The end result is that people are afraid of ever saying the name itself, which creates fear of the thing itself. Fear of a name only increases fear of the thing itself. Which by the way, if I was a traveling salesman in the wizarding world, I would just taboo all of my items and as soon as someone needed something, I'd be like, poo, hey, you need this thing? Not sure why I said poo. It's going for more of a poof, but you know, now where we are. But when it comes to bear, it's kind of funny because people became so afraid of saying the true name of the bear that bear became the word that we still use today. But bear used to just mean the brown one, or depending on the dialect, the shaggy one, or my personal favorite, the one who eats honey. No bother. And I'm sure at this point you're wondering, well, Jay, what was the true name of bear? And that's the really funny part to me is that we don't know. People just started saying bear so much that the true name has been lost to history. Which to me is kind of a bummer, but there are some guesses out there as to what it must have been similar to. Personally, I like to believe it actually was Voldemort. The Slavic language though was derived from Latin, so it would make sense that the original Slavic word for bear would be similar to the Latin word for bear. Which, and I think I'm saying this right, is Ursus? All right, well, note to self, don't say that again. Don't say what again? Er, mm, 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 mm. But what's fun about the name, I'm sorry, who wrote fun? What's fun about the name is that within the Harry Potter books, there actually is a character who might be referencing this hidden connection between bears and Voldemort. None other than Regulus Arcturus Black, whose middle name Arcturus actually means guardian of Ursus. <laughs> <clears throat> yep, that's my bad. Walked right into that one. <clears throat> Speaking of the Death Eaters though, we've actually also theorized about why they are called Death Eaters in the full video by clicking the card. But this connection to bears could actually offer up a different explanation. One of the more common guesses as to why they are called Death Eaters is that they are cannibals. They literally eat their dead victims. Death eaters. Okay, maybe not all of their victims, but the idea is that cannibalism has something to do with it, or maybe something to do with how horcruxes are made. Regardless though, this is relevant to today's video because way back when in some Slavic countries, eating the meat of a bear was forbidden and actually would have been seen as an act of cannibalism. Which might sound like it's coming out of left field, but this is because in some cultures, bears were seen as cursed creatures, that they were actually people who had been turned into bears for committing sins. The plot of Brave, it turns out, is not entirely baseless. This idea came about though because bears can walk on their hind legs, which makes them more human-like, and therefore acting against the laws of nature. Against the laws of nature. Where have I heard that in Harry Potter? Uh, ah, yes, it is how Slughorn describes the process of making a horcrux to a young Tom Riddle. How do you split your soul? Well, said Slughorn uncomfortably, you must understand that the soul is supposed to remain intact and whole. Splitting it is an act of violation. It is against nature. Which brings us to the stag. Because if the bear was considered an act of violation against nature, do you know what creature was considered an actual manifestation of nature itself? The stag. In fact, in Slavic culture, the stag actually would have been considered half animal and half tree because its antlers look like branches. Point is, the stag is very important to Harry Potter because it is Harry Potter's Patronus, like the arch enemy of Voldemort. You've heard of him. But hey, I hear you sitting there typing away, Jay, this sounds great, but honestly, seriously, how could it not be a snake? Like, snakes are Voldemort's whole thing. True, true, and in fact, there is someone known as the King of Snakes in Slavic mythology. His name is Veals, and he's kind of like Hades. He's the god of the underworld, and while, yes, true, he can turn into a large winged snake, he can also turn into, wait for it, a butterfly. Just kidding. That was a callback to earlier in the video. It's a bear. Not only that, but Veals, the bear morphic king of snakes, is also considered the polar opposite of another god, Perun, who is sort of the Zeus of Slavic mythology. He is the god of, wait for it, lightning. As in Gryffindor's golden boy, Harry Potter. The boy who lived. 
You've heard of him. But I bring up the fact that he is a Gryffindor specifically because there is yet one more connection that ties Voldemort to the bear. And that is how culturally the bear has been dethroned as the king of animals by the lion. In his book, The Bear, History of a Fallen King by Michael Pastoro, he talks about how the oldest statue we've ever found some 15 to 20,000 years ago was of a bear. How its centrality to the different myths, legends, and cultures from Slavic East to Celtic Britain is unrivaled. The bear truly was the king of beasts. Until that is the advent of Christianity, where early Christians were threatened by the legends of the bear's power. As a result, bears were massacred across Europe, and instead the lion was installed as the symbol of nobility. The bear was replaced by the lion because of people's belief and faith in someone who rose from the dead. Hmm. Also, also, actually, actually, remember our good friend Regulus Arcturus Black and how his middle name Arcturus meant guardian of Earth's... <laughs> no, 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 don't say it, don't say it. Yeah, that's great and all, and Arcturus might be his middle name, but his first name, Regulus, do you know what star that is? Yeah, it's the brightest star in the Leo constellation. Boom. Yeah, sorry, Bear de Mort, or should I call you the one who eats honey, but you got nothing when it comes to lion versus bears. Hang on, what was that second to last word? Oh, versus? What was it? Versus. Still not, I'm still not hearing it. Va versus. No! <laughs> mm. Anyway, that's why Voldemort's Patronus is definitely a bear, not a snake. If we could all get the one who eats honey trending on Twitter, that'd be, well, that'd be swell. I'd appreciate it. Guys, Voldemort might be the one who eats honey, but that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with eating honey. And great news, we got you covered. We have amazing, super tasty honey available over at carlinbrotherscoffee.com. Thanks as always for watching today's video. If you liked it, please remember to leave a like and ding that bell so you don't miss any future Harry Potter content from us. If you want to see what Hagrid's Patronus is, you can check out this video right here. Or if you want to see what we think Newt's Patronus is, you can check out this video right here. But until next time, I'll see you in another life, brother.